Hey everybody, welcome back to The Bourbon Note. I'm Greg. I'm Ben. And today we have a bourbon flight. All right, Ben, what do we have? All right, we've got a Four Roses flight. Uh, this is exciting because I haven't uh, delved into the Four Roses products too much. I mean, I've had at least a, a little bit of each of these except for maybe the regular small batch. Yeah. Um, they're pretty common, easy to find. Uh, for the most part, yep. Yeah, yeah. I mean, this one's uh, the rarer yep. of these. There's a line of the Four Roses single barrel that there's like 10 different recipes of, and, and those tend to be store picks. Or is that, are they regular releases? I think they're regular, well, yeah, it's the same thing, I, I would guess, is maybe a store, a distributor picks a, a, you know, a barrel, and then that's what they release, so, yeah. Okay. But do they, I was kind of wondering, I should have maybe looked this up, if they have, um, like, I know they've got the different, like, OESK and whatever they're, yep. I can't memorize them all. Right. I didn't know if they do, like, an actual line of those, or if all of those are just a store pick barrel like you just said and then they release that 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 i'm not sure of and one thing about the four roses line that i find really interesting is they have two yeast strains okay no i'm sorry they have five yeast strains and they have two mash bills they have a kind of a, a lower corn and then a really higher corn and and the and they replace it with a rye so their high rye is super high rye. It's thirty percent. Oh wow! Okay. Um, and so that this one you'll notice it when we get to there. Okay. Um, but between the um, the two mash bills and the five yeast strains, there's ten different recipes. Combo ten. Okay. And they use all ten to make this one. They only use a couple of them to make this one. This is a single, so one, and then a couple of them for this one. When you say a couple like that, like a blend of barrels, like that, they... that would be my guess. They, okay. On like for instance, the small batch, they say four recipes. So, oh, so okay. two of those are a particular yeast strain in the 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 high rye, and two of them are a yeast strain in the low rye. Lower rye. I, yeah. I think their yeah, low rye is all, yeah, relatively yeah. high, isn't yeah, it? Exactly. Okay, great. Okay, so this is so from this side over, this is the base model. Yep. Um, Sometimes called yellow label, but I think the color did change. So. Yeah, it's more of a beige label now, but <laughs> yeah, classically called Four Roses yellow label. This is about twenty bucks, yep. give or take. And then the next one up is small batch. This was this gets around like thirty ish, maybe a tad higher. But uh, yeah, yeah, I think I saw it thirty at Costco. So yeah, yeah. probably a few bucks more anywhere yep. else. But still pretty easy to find. Sure, um, the the single barrel you can find anywhere. Yeah, that's really common. Um, these at two least I see in Minnesota. the most. Yeah. To be honest, we see these in Minnesota all the time. Yeah, um, maybe not those crazy recipes, but just the general single barrel. Yep. Um, and then the small batch select is a little more difficult I, to. I had heard that it's not even available in Minnesota. Um, I know someone who picked this bottle up for me, and it may have come from North Dakota. Um, okay. This one is harder to find. Okay, so we're going in ascending proof. We got eighty proof, ninety proof, hundred proof, hundred four proof. And these have all been sitting out for. I know we don't have coins on the top of them or anything like that, oh. so they're going. They're exposed to the air, but they've been equally exposed to the air. So, yep. and I don't think this is necessarily a comparative as far as trying to pick. No, it's more best just and worst, to experience just to, the brand. And yeah, yeah, the, exactly. There is some similarity between them all, and then some uniqueness. Yeah, and I've actually not owned a Four Roses product, believe it or not. Okay. Um, I obviously like to buy a lot of bourbon, but I got into bourbon about a, a little over a year ago, like really into specifically bourbon. Yeah. And there's just so many things out there that are on my to-do list that are readily available and and sometimes you skip over the readily available ones because you find something rare and then you spend your money on that and then then you got to you know put the bank account to yep to rest for a little bit and so yeah i just haven't gotten around to actually purchasing any of these so i'm I'm looking forward to this one another one and this bottle's almost gone i need to pick up another one um so even though this is the base model and it's pretty inexpensive it's five years Really? Which is a a tad high, I think, for uh, entry-level bourbon. Yeah. You would think, you know, some of them are... Three or four. Yeah, right. And then the rest of them are are pretty good age. This is six to seven years. Okay. Um, This one, they say seven to nine. Okay. Which is awesome. You can get between the rye and the barrel spice. This one is going to... It's powerful. This is the one I've had the most experience with. Yeah. And and I I do like it. Anyway, you were saying so. And then this one, uh, again, they said six to seven years, but this must come from some pretty special barrels. Okay. It's, it's awesome. All right, let's do it. All right. So this is, so we have 
our flights are set up the same as you know, so these are both. Yep, the same one. So this is the yellow label. As it was formerly known as. Getting vanilla on the nose. Yeah, I was just gonna say that too, actually. A little bit of vanilla. There's um. There's definitely the rye influence for sure. It's not overwhelming, like it's not like a punch you in the sure. face spicy rye, but it's there. You can tell. Yeah, no. more caramel. No. Yeah, it doesn't quite have. I mean, I think you, you know, like you said, the, the five years for a base model. I know, like Jim Beam White Label and Jack Daniels have been here four years. Yep. And you know, a year makes a difference. <laughs> yeah. um, when you get down to like the base model Buffalo Trace that are three years, like Ancient Age and uh, Benchmark, you can really smell the youth on those. Yeah. They, they're a little more grain forward sometimes yep. on the nose. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, this doesn't quite have that. All right, I'm going for the taste here. All right, cheers. Spicy brown sugar. Yep. A little bit of like, like a nutmeg kind of spicy. Yeah, I can see that. Whenever there's anything that's high rye, there's always in. To what degree this note is in there really kind of just depends on the, the bourbon. It's there in this one, but it's pretty faint. There's a little bit of a black licorice note that I get from higher rye oh. stuff, or rye whiskeys in general. Huh. Um, <coughs> excuse me. And so I, I get a little bit of that in here. It's very faint. It's not right in your face, but it's definitely there. It's that, for me, that's what I always pull out of ryes and higher really high rye bourbons. Sometimes on a high rye bourbon you can't, it just is spicier in general, yep. but you don't really pick out necessarily the exact rye whiskey flavor. Yeah. Whereas this one, I it smells like there's a, um, like I said, not just that spice. Like a, a rye whiskey doesn't have just spice, it's got a specific sure. nose and palate to it. And I get a faint like little bit of that on this. But it does have the sweetness like you were talking about, some vanilla and caramel. Yep. Still some nutmeg. I mean, some mm -hmm. of the normal, the brown sugar and caramel, but nutmeg. Kind of some nice, almost we call it baking spice kind of yeah. notes, but nice, pleasant bourbon. Yeah, I mean, for 20 bucks, boy, that's not bad at all. Right. I mean, yeah, it's an everyday drinker. That's why it's almost gone. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's an easy one to just pull off the shelf anytime and pour yourself a glass of, sure. One of the things that I noticed on it, though, is... Uh, like I would compared to a lot of bourbons, I'm almost surprised at the proof. Like it feels, it tastes like it's a little higher than that. Yeah, yeah. There's some that come in at 80 proof where you can tell they're 80 proof. Right. They seem to even seem like they're 79 proof. <laughs> right. You know, and then there's some that really come in that punch a little bit above their proof point. Yeah. And that's always good. I mean, my guess is that some of it's the alcohol, some of it's the the wood notes and yeah, the rye all help make this a real well balanced bourbon. Just sure for even 80 proof. Yeah, I think a higher rye, lower proof, um, mm -hmm. the rye is going to compensate for the loss of some of that flavor that you lose going all the way down to 80 proof. And definitely age. Yeah, definitely. Mm. All right, now I'm excited for this one. Small batch. So this we're at 90 proof, 10 proof points higher, and uh, six to seven years. And, and of the recipes that are, how many, uh, four recipes? Four recipes, yeah. So two of them are the high rye, two are the low rye. So it should be a higher rye than this one. Okay. Um, they don't say what the blending percentage is. So sure. I'm assuming it's equal, but I don't know that for sure. So this should punch a little bit more on the rye side. All right, let's get into it. <clears throat> nice and rinsed. You want to just smell the dishwasher, you know? <laughs> it smells like soap. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it smells clean, but it smells like it came out of a dishwasher, which it did. Oh, yeah, that's got, um, this has that same kind of rye, noticeable rye note, but it's definitely kind of surrounded by more of a baking spice, brown sugar. Yeah. Oh, that's really nice. I'm getting a lot of the sweetness for the most part. 
Yeah, it's like I said that I can. It still knows is like a high rye bourbon, but it's yeah, it's it's definitely buried a little more under more of a sweet. Like mm -hmm. I'm really getting brown sugar on this one. Yeah. All right, I'm going for the taste here. Oh wow, I get a lot of burn. Yeah, it's got a nice little punch to it. Mm -hmm. Um, this kind of has a little bit of a shortbread. Yeah, to almond it. shortbread. Yeah, kind of yeah. With yeah. with the kind of combined with the baking spice, it's yeah. just got. Yeah, definitely the the upfront rye nose and palate yep. that this one has is is more subtle on this one, but it's got a better punch to it. Mm -hmm. I think it's just it, this one feels a little more balanced and rounded out. Yeah, <clears throat> you know, where all the flavors in here are just kind of working together. Whereas this one, I kind of got some of them, but I had that one note that really stuck out more than the other ones. This one had a great finish. It, yeah, I feel like. Um, a lot more of the barrel, even though it's it's six to seven, I and mean, it's fairly long. But yeah, great long finish, lots of flavor, lots of complexity, things happening. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is an awesome bourbon. Yeah, they still have this at Costco for twenty nine bucks. I'm definitely gonna stop and pick one up. <clears throat> Getting a little bit of like cherry note. It's it's faint, but just a little bit of <clears throat> a hint of cherry. Kind of on the finish. After after it's gone, then the, it like there's a note. Red fruit, cherry kind of note. I think I'm getting more just that rye balance with those nice sweet mm -hmm. um, shortbread brown sugar notes. Yeah, this is this is really good. I, I I'm impressed. Like I said, I haven't had this one before. All right, I gotta finish it so we can move on. Yeah, I suppose it wouldn't make sense to go all the way down and then back down again because then you're going from the 104 proof back down to 80, and that's just not fair. That's not fair to the poor. We we can do that. Labels. We'll just do that post video. <laughs> right. <laughs> Pause for possible edit here. I notice the only time you can hear any swallowing is if we're taking a big drink of water. Okay. <laughs> okay. So now we've got single barrel. This one is seven to nine years, so we're getting up there a little more in age, 100 proof. And, and this is... Called out specifically for being the high rye <laughs> recipe. Okay, so this is just the high... The yeah. highest rye. High rye, have. and only one of their yeast strains. Okay. Um, I forget which one it is. They're all named weird. But, yeah, so this is one of their recipes, one of the ten, and is the barrel, is the recipe that goes in their single barrels. Okay. All right. Does this have any barrel information on it? Oh, sure it does. Yeah. Warehouse JE barrel 11-5T. All right. Not that we can probably do a whole lot with that information, but maybe somebody watching has that same one. I wonder where... I've had that bottle for probably a year. Mm. It came from somewhere in Minnesota. So what's sticking out right off the bat with this one is for being the high, high rye mm -hmm. mash bill. I'm getting more sweetness off of it, and I think that's just that extra time in the barrel, pulling the wood sugars out, and those caramel and vanilla notes and stuff like that. I think you're right. Yeah, so I mean, even the, I think if you were to take this and just age it the five years, this would have a bigger rye punch to it. Probably, you're right. A little yep. less time in the barrel, but mm -hmm. yeah, it's really, really well balanced with, uh, and, and you get the, the wood, you know, the, the oak note too. Yeah. I do kind of get an almond note. Yeah, yeah, I can see that. All right, I'm going to go in for the taste here. Wow. 
that just has a ton of flavor. A ton of flavor, a ton of things happening. Yeah. For 100 proof, I, I feel like this even punches above the 100 proof point. Because I've, I've had plenty of 100 proof bourbons that are great, even like good budget ones like, yep. you know, Evan Williams Bottled and Bond or something like that, or any Bottled and Bond for sure. that matter. But you know, even some of the budget ones at 100 proof really have a nice, rich flavor. Yeah. But this one, even at the 100 proof, has just a way more complexity and it punches above that not in a bad way not in like an alcohol yeah like too much right. alcohol yeah. but it really drinks like there's a lot there's a lot happening there's yeah a lot there's of a lot flavors. going on there definitely get some of the a lot of the spicy notes that the others have mm -hmm. the the oak is obviously noticeable yeah it's been in the oak a long time this one it's almost like it's balanced enough that it kind of just works well-rounded, but at the same time, I'm almost getting like every one of the notes kind of gets their turn. Like you kind of, at first I'm getting that sweetness and those, um, um, like the, the, like I said, the wood sugars, like the vanillas and the caramels and stuff like that. And then they kind of fade out and then that rye spice kind of kicks in. And then on the finish, getting that like almond and barrel and almost a cherry. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. That's really good. And I've had this one a few times, but it's been a little while, and it was at, you know, someone else's sure. house, and yep. just had a pour of it while we were hanging out, so we probably had a couple other drinks that night. And yep. It's awesome to have them in a flight, though. You know, yeah, where you really kind of is. see the family progression. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what I love about doing flights within the same yeah. thing, like, a you know, any brand, and yep. you do their flight. You can really kind of see the... Because you can tell they're all part of the same family. Yep. But you can see how the different aging and the different proof points and stuff really affect it. Right. Sometimes get a, I get a slight medicinal quality from higher See, rye stuff and rye whiskeys in general. I associate that with the cherry, like it's when it becomes a little bit strong. Mm -hmm. There is a a certain note or a certain flavor on the back of my tongue that I get that is almost unpleasant, and I definitely notice it with this. But there's so much other stuff that I like about it. But this one is a bit harsh. I feel yeah, it's not a beginner one for <laughs> sure. No, yeah, right. And the, so the story on this one is this was the first Four Roses they ever had two years ago. I was not a fan. Now, I didn't know anything about it. I didn't understand the history and the fact that this is their longest age. Well, not the long, longest age that we have here and uh, highest rye. Um, that's not a good place to start for me as a, a bourbon yeah, it's novice. Yeah, it's aggressive. Yeah, yeah I, I wouldn't put this in, uh, in like a recommend for beginners <laughs> category for sure. Right. But once you get into it, once you kind of learn what you like, and I think the further you get into bourbon, you learn to appreciate most areas of it. You know, you may have a favorite. Maybe you really like high rye ones and you don't yep. quite like the sweet ones as much yep. or vice versa. But you kind of get to appreciate all of it, whereas at the beginning, one that you maybe don't like quite as much comes off as very off-putting. All you feel is the burn and you don't yeah. you can't appreciate the other. And if you've never had a rye or a high rye, that can be an off putting oh, definitely. note as well. I mean that's a I kinda consider high rye bourbons to not really be beginner bourbons, even if they're lower proof. Just Agreed. in the sense that it's just different. That, it is yeah. totally different than a maker's mark. It yeah. is just oh, yeah, for totally sure. Totally different. Go from a weeder to a high rye. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, if if you were a beginner and you just bought, you know, a bottle of uh, something really high rye or a weeder, and it's like, okay, I'm just going to try two bourbons. It's like yeah. you're going to have a world of difference there. Yeah, agreed. All right, let's get into this one here. So this is what happens when uh, you have a great distillery, Four Roses, pick the best of the best and say, let's make this. And they've got versions of this also that are really rare and sought after. Am I right about that? Well, so every year they also do a limited release. And those are the expensive ones? Crazy there. expensive, hard to find. They do a lottery because everybody <clears throat> wants it. I did not get one this year. Okay. I would have driven to Kentucky to go pick up to my pick bottle. Up. <laughs> yeah, I wanted to. Okay. Well, right. now I'm excited. Yeah. This is the Small Batch Select. 104 proof, six to seven years. This is six recipes, three high rye. Exactly. All right. Now, I had this once at your house, um, but I don't really, I mean, we had sampled a whole bunch of bourbons that night. Right. And this was later into that sampling. <laughs> you got to try this. Yeah, it never ends well. Yeah, Greg and I tend to, it's like, 
hey, do you want to come over and just do a flight of something? And then it turns into, you know. Well, we do small pours. They're very small pours, yeah, but we'll sample everything on the show pretty much. I mean, they're, yeah, they're very small pours, but yeah. even at that point, sampling 20 bourbons is going to add up. Yeah, 20 small pours is a, a big pour. I mean, reasonably, they're small enough pours where it probably equals out to a couple, a couple yeah. two ounce pours, yep. you know, two or three, but mm-hmm. two or three two ounce pours, is, you know. Yep. Point is, it's easy for one to get lost in the mix of what oh, you I, tried that I agree. night. So, man, this is. Uh, I feel like this one was a little more aggressive on the nose. I, I would totally agree. This one on the nose is not not showing up as much. And mm-hmm. some of it's because we're now on our fourth of four. Right. Well, and the thing is, too, is this is actually 104 proof, and this is 100. I guess I was thinking there's a little bit more of a yep. difference. Yeah. Yep. And look at the little cheat sheet here. All right. That's a... Uh, I mean, it's definitely the same family. I'm getting kind of... They all have the same thing going on, but just in different levels of it. Yeah. Just slight variations of the same. Yeah. Nope. Yeah. Kind of like the same piece of wood, but you use different grits of sandpaper. You're going to get different oh, I thought you were going to do a musical. A musical. <laughs> Everybody's playing the same melody, but different instruments. Right, yeah, exactly. All right. Wow. Wow. I don't remember so much burn. Fry burn. And... I was going to say, that's high proof. High proof, high barrel, high, high rye. rye. Yeah, a lot of barrel. Yeah. And this is a little bit younger than it is than the other one here. Um, it's really good. I like it. It's awesome, yeah. I don't consider a 104 proof to be a high not, proof. Not crazy high. But no. this drinks, <laughs> yeah. I think that's kind of the common theme with these. They, with that rye spice and with, you know, even this one having an extra year over most yep. budget bourbons, high rye, little extra barrel. I would say overall, it seems like Four Roses is a tad spicier than anything else that, yeah. it, that it should compare with. Yeah. And that's, it's a good thing. It's a, kind of a unique aspect to their family. Yeah. I feel like you could really possibly pick one of these out of a flight if you didn't, if you knew there was a Four Roses oh, in a flight I, I of some other things. Yep. You might be able to pull this one out of there yeah, and say the like that's the Four Roses product. Yeah. Yeah. Now, whether or not I could actually do that in practice, who knows. But they just seem like it's got a distinct en- enough of a, you know, kind of just overall vibe going to it. Where, like I said, that you can tell they're all in the same family. We're going to have to remember that. Tune in next week for the Name the Family. <laughs> yeah, Name That show. Family. So now that I've, now that I've uh, tasted a couple times and really getting some, some almond, almost pecan kind of notes. I really feel that comes from the wood, but there's definitely... Mm-hmm. Almond kind of smoothness, smooth, smoothness. It's kind of interesting. That almond note has kind of been here with all of them. Yep. <clears throat> um, There's a real dryness. Like this one, I don't get any sweetness. Really, it maybe yeah, initially. But I agree with you on that. On the mid point of the taste, and then all through the finish, there's no sweetness. Mm-hmm. And that's not a bad thing. It's just unique. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with you. Like when we first sipped this, it was just. High proof, high barrel, high rye, you know. Yeah. Mm. One of the things I'm looking for with any bourbon that I have is, is this a unique bourbon that I want to have on the bourbon wall to pull down and say, you got to try this. Sure, and absolutely. I think any one of these qualifies as... Unique for each one of their categories, whether it be age or proof point or price, each one of them is unique, and that's what makes them kind of special. Yeah, and it's something like this is fun to have. Well, and then plus, sometimes you're just in a particular mood for a particular kind of bourbon, Mm -hmm. and so it's good to have something like this on your shelf where it is unique, and you can say, you know what, tonight I'm gonna have a pour of that because that's exactly what I'm in the mood for. Exactly, or you have a friend over who maybe is just getting into bourbon or likes bourbon doesn't know a whole lot and they want to try a couple of different things any of these would be a great like hey here's a high rye one this is what that's all about yep totally. you know so yeah i like all these i would happily have any one of these on my shelf and i i will 
begin making progress towards having that happen. So, yep. All right. Anything else about these? I think, uh, yeah, I absolutely recommend it. Any of them, if you see them, grab one. Sure, absolutely. All right, well, hey, thanks for watching. This has been Four Roses. Thanks for watching. Bourbon note. Ciao. <laughs>